Hello, I'm Luca Torex and welcome to my mercenary guide for Rome Total War. This is the second part of a three part series and today we are going to be analysing and discussing the mercenaries available in the Mediterranean region. Sort of the area around the Greek cities, Macedon, the starting Roman factions, that kind of region. And to be honest, these are some of the strongest mercenaries you'll find in the game. Not a lot of cavalry available here, that was more discussed last time when I talked about the barbarian mercenaries, particularly in the sort of Scythia region, but we do have some very strong archers, some nice javelin men, and some very interesting units of defensive and offensive infantry. So I think we should just get straight into it and discuss the units. I hope you enjoy. So first of all, we're going to be having a look at some of the Javelin units. And there are two in particular I want to compare. The Illyrian Mercenaries and the Mercenary Peltasts. You can see that the Mercenary Peltasts are cheaper by about 150 denarii. Now what's interesting is, even though these Mercenary Peltasts, and this was the only screenshot I could find, I even went in the game and they still had one experience. Even though they have that experience bonus, they're not as good in the melee attack, they're not as good in the missile attack, and they are only just slightly better uh, in the defense. So, honestly, I would go for Illyrian mercenaries just based off the actual stats. Same amount of soldiers in each unit. Interestingly, the Peltas, despite being cheaper to recruit, are actually more expensive to upkeep by 40 denarii. And that 40 denarii will add up in 10 turns. That's 400 denarii. That's almost already the price that you paid for them in the first place. So, just something to think about there. Now, if we look at their abilities at a glance, both of them are fast moving, which you're gonna expect from Javelin Men. I would hope they're fast moving um, because they're gonna be skirmishing. They're gonna be trying to sort of outmaneuver their enemies and fire Javelins and making them tired. And that's what these guys are good at. Both units have a bonus versus elephants and chariots. Now, I always do find this interesting because really in this region, you're not going to be fighting elephants and chariots. These guys are mostly found in the sort of Thracian region of the map, sort of that area, Greece, that kind of area. And the chariots and elephants are found in North Africa and Egypt and the Middle East. So interesting choice that they are, you know, have that bonus. But overall, I would generally choose Illyrian mercenaries. If you want something good, sometimes you've got to pay a bit of money for it, unless you actually need a unit either to sap, because the Peltas can sap, but the Illyrian mercenaries can't, or you just haven't got the money and you need anything, then I would go with the Illyrian mercenaries. But honestly, both these units are pretty solid. They're gonna do a decent job. They're gonna get a few hits. They'll ja their javelins will run out pretty quickly, and also they don't pack a serious punch, particularly at a long, long range but not a terrible unit, pretty pretty solid unit I would say indeed. And we're going to also be comparing two rather similar units again, and this time it's going to be Slingers. Rhodian Slingers and Balearic Slingers. I think I'm saying Balearic, right? Balearic? I'm, I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Now, I am aware that the Balearic Slingers should have been included in the last episode, but I specifically wanted to compare them to the Rhodian Slingers just because they do a pretty similar job. Now, Really, actually, it kind of is a little bit pointless comparing these two because the Balearic Slingers are available in the Iberian region and the Balearic Islands, believe it or not, around Spain, whereas the Rhodian Slingers are quite a bit east towards the sort of Greek roads area. So, you know, obviously they're not going to be in exactly the same place, but I still thought it'd be rather interesting. So, yeah, just in case you're wondering, I think it's important to compare these two guys just because it's fun. Now, honestly, these guys are practically identical. There really isn't much to differentiate them at all. They've got exactly the same picture. Not a terrible missile attack at all. 9 and 10 respectively is certainly not too terrible at all. Both 750 denarii. Both okay in the melee attack and defense. But really again, you're not going to be using them for that purpose. What is cool about them though, is they have good morale. I do quite like that good morale. Um, now, not 100% necessary for this unit because you're not going to be using these guys too much in the melee. But what it does mean is if stuff goes very wrong, maybe you leave a little bit of a gap in your defense and a unit of cavalry manages, manages to charge around the back and get to your slingers, they're not going to break straight away. They can hold their own for a little bit and they're not going to be cowards. And you might think, well, it doesn't matter if they can hold for a bit because they're not going to be doing anything anyway. They're just going to be whacking them with their little daggers or whatever. Sure, but of course, as You'll know if you played Rome Total War, morale is very important and if one unit breaks, it can cause a domino effect and break much more important units. So just the fact that a unit of, let's say, Rhodian Slingers might not break for a few seconds longer will keep the main guys going for that little bit longer to potentially win you the battle. These small things do have a big effect on the battle. 
Now, slingers in general, what do I feel about slingers? Well, I'm not a huge fan. These guys are actually fast moving, which is pretty cool, so they can do the sort of skirmishing thing. But I like the just general speed of javelin men more, and I would always choose archers over both because of the long range and the fact that they can just generally pack more of a punch with their missiles. And also, I do tend to find that javelin men and slingers run out of missiles quicker than archers. So, you know, I'm not a huge fan of slingers, and also I feel that their throwing arc is also quite sort of shallow, so they're not quite as good going uphill as maybe other units are, but still not too bad at all. You know, if I was in a region where I had maybe a decent amount of money and I needed an extra unit just for that sort of missile attack, then I would definitely pick up the slingers. I wouldn't go out of my way to get them, let's put it that way. Now a unit I would go out of my way to pick up is Cretan Archers, quite possibly my favourite unit of mercenaries. When I see the little symbols shine up in the, the bottom right corner saying I've got a new mercenary and I click on that and I see Cretan Archers are there, that always makes me happy. 750 denarii, we've discussed that's not a lot of money in the grand scheme of things. Missile attack, 11, pretty damn solid. Pretty solid indeed. Melee attack, 6. Defense, 4. Not a bad unit at all. They can do a decent job in the melee attack and defense. Not incredible, but if you've played, particularly on very hard mode, and you've played against Cretan Archers before, they can be very annoying to take down, you know, particularly on walls and stuff. And again, if you're having a battle and it's not going very well, and you're having to have your Cretan Archers fight in the wall, they can actually do a decent job for a good amount of time. And one of the reasons is because of that good morale they've got. Very rare for a unit of archers, mercenaries or not mercenaries, in fact I'm pretty sure these are the only mercenary archers that are available that aren't on horseback, so they're quite unique in that way. But also, it's just very unique in general for archers to have good morale, and these guys do. These guys are better than most archers you'll find in the game. You know, you're talking about the basic Roman archers that you have at the beginning of the game, or maybe you're playing as a barbarian faction, you have the rubbish, crappy barbarian archers or whatever, these are way better than those guys because they can stand up in the melee attack and defense, they can pack a punch at, with their long, long range missiles and they have good morale. And talking of long range missiles, it's actually a specific ability. These guys can fire further than most archers. You get these guys in the high point, you get these guys on walls or a hill or something like that and you fire into the distance. Oh my lord, they will fire for a long time. They have lots of ammo capacity and they'll just they'll just be hitting troops long before they can even dream about hitting you. They won't even be able to see your army and they'll be having an arrow in the face and then they won't be able to see anything. And that's what's so great about the Cretan archers. So definitely, definitely would pick these guys up. Even if I have an abundance of archers, I always pick up Cretan archers because it's likely better than anything I can recruit, particularly in the early game. So very, very solid unit indeed. Yeah, their upkeep is a little bit pricey, but absolutely worth it. These guys are cool. I like their hats. Just everything about them, Cretan archers are really, really great. So definitely, definitely always pick them up. And if, if you have a choice between any missile units, Cretan archers are always going to come up on top in terms of mercenaries. That is for damn sure. So next up, we're going to be having a look at the Spearman units that are available for mercenaries in the Mediterranean. And we're going to be comparing Samnite mercenaries and mercenary hoplites. Now, I think it's pretty clear that mercenary hoplites are better, and there's a variety of reasons why, but it doesn't mean that Samnite mercenaries are particularly bad in any way. So let's have a look at the Samnite mercenaries first. Now, these most likely spawn on the Italian peninsula, where the Brutii, uh, Scipii, and Julii start. They seem to be always particularly around the Brutii region, that's in my experience. But anyway, Samnite mercenaries, they are light spearmen, which actually isn't really super common. I mean, Hoplites are heavy spearmen, so, you know, we'll be seeing the difference between them in a second. Attack of 6, defense of 15. 15 is not bad at all, certainly a rather commendable level. Uh, attack of 6 isn't amazing, but this is a rather defensive unit, so they don't really need to pack a huge punch. But again, we'll discuss that in a second. Abilities at a glance, only 3, crucially. They do have a bonus fighting cavalry, like most spearmen do. Combat bonus and woods and can sap, they're not quite as useful. But the crucial difference between Samnite mercenaries and mercenary hoplites are that Samnite mercenaries cannot form a phalanx, and that is, it makes them inferior, I would say, but it doesn't mean they're terrible by any means. So let's have a look at Samnite mercenaries. 750 denarii, pretty standard price for mercenaries in this region, but what is cool about Samnite mercenaries are they are pretty solid defensive unit. They're 
they're just going to do a nice solid job at holding the line, maybe not for a huge amount of time, but if you just need an extra unit to sort of bolster up your sort of front line, or maybe even the flanks, I quite like using um, spearmen on the flanks, they can do quite a good job at just holding the enemy back. Now, why would I put Samnite mercenaries and, incidentally, mercenary hoplites as well on the flanks? Well, because they have a bonus fighting cavalry, and in the game, the AI, particularly with larger armies, tend to have a very, very wide line. The AI, in my experience, really likes a wide line. And what that means is that the cavalry, which is pretty much always on the flanks, will be wider than your line. And the cavalry tries to get around the flanks and the side and the back of your troops. And that can actually be quite damaging because if they charge into the side of your, you know, your front line, they're not going to be able to sort of uh, deal with it as properly. Or even worse, if they charge into your archers, then your missile fire is completely gone. A Samnite mercenaries will do a solid job at just protecting the flanks. It's not the most crucial region, it's not the region where you're going to need the most strength, but it is a region where it's a nice sort of backup to have, just in case the cavalry of the opposition does decide to attack. Not an amazing unit, and the main difference really is, like I say, they don't have good morale, um, and they can't form a phalanx. Now, hoplites instantly don't have good morale anyway, but the phalanx does mean they can hold for a bit longer. Now, the phalanx, of course, is a defensive spear formation, these guys do have a defensive spear formation, but it's not quite as solid and compact as the Hoplites, which is a little bit of a shame, but still a pretty solid unit indeed. And of course, we go on to the Hoplites as well. 100 denarii more expensive, but 100 denarii well spent, really, if you've got the money, of course. An attack of 7 and defense of 16 is pretty comparable to the Samnite Mercenaries, actually, only very slightly better. Good stamina is a cool trait because it means they can just sort of stand up for a bit longer, they're less likely to get tied. But yeah, this is the main advantage of the Hoplites is the Phalanx formation, which really, if you're fighting non-Phalanx factions, you're going to have a huge advantage. Um, and if you are fighting Phalanx-based factions, then you're going to need them to compare to them. And it just is a very solid, sort of impenetrable wall that will decimate, absolutely destroy, is a better use of the word, actually destroy uh, enemy cavalry that decides to charge into it. And they'll do a pretty damn good job. Better in the early game than in the late game, because as the units start progressing, the fact that they don't have good morale is a little bit damaging, to be honest. But still, they will always do a solid job. I like to have these guys on the front line or on the flanks to deal with the cavalry, like I discussed with the Samnite mercenaries. And this is the only phalanx unit available for the mercenaries. In fact, comparing them to all the spearmen, we'll be discussing in another video, you know, the eastern mercenaries that are spearmen. You know, these are wildly better. They're better than Samnite mercenaries as well. They can just hold up and a nice sort of defensive unit. They're not going to get many kills in, but they're going to keep the enemy back for long enough so that you can get that crucial cavalry or infantry charge into the back and end the, end the battle uh, nice and succinctly. So Hoplites definitely would recommend if you need that extra sort of boost. Now we're also going to be comparing the Basterni and the Thracian mercenaries. I hope I'm saying Basterni right. Basterni, Basterni, not quite sure. Now these are two fairly comparable units, but actually they do have a surprising amount of differences as well, particularly in price. A quick note beforehand, some of the units I can only always find with one experience. There's not a screenshot of Thracian mercenaries I've found with zero experience. So I don't know if they always come with one experience, but I played the game, I tried to recruit Thracian mercenaries and every time they had one experience. So it's not exactly a fair comparison, but you can still see the general differences. Let's start off with Thracian mercenaries, which you won't be surprised to know, originate from the area of Thrace, the sort of, what is the light blue region of the map, sort of uh, a bit northeast of modern day Greece. Now Thracian mercenaries, very, very interesting unit and I quite like them indeed. Heavy weapon type, 11 attack, 7 defense are pretty okay stats. A 5 charge bonus actually isn't too bad for infantry as well, but they're interestingly fast moving even though they have a heavy weapon type. So quite versatile considering they actually pack quite a hard punch with their sort of pole axe weapon that they've got. It, it, the game seems to say here it's called a rompeer, so I guess that's how you pronounce it. I'm not entirely sure, but a pretty cool weapon indeed. Now, again, a little bit unruly with these guys. They may charge without orders, which isn't a thing I particularly like. It doesn't happen too often, actually. But, yeah, I like my armies to be a little bit more orderly. But still, they will do a pretty good job. These guys are a more offensive unit, I would say. You don't really want them in a defensive position like the hot pipes we just discussed. These guys are going to be charging forward and just sort of attacking nice and hard, which is pretty cool. And they have a bonus fighting in the woods, which is pretty cool. Don't forget that war cry. Now, let's compare them to the Bastani. The Bastani are nearly a 1,000 denarii more expensive. That is... a huge amount of money. 1,700 denarii 
is the most we've come across so far for non-cavalry mercenaries, I believe. And looking at the stats, they're not a whole lot more amazing. 11 attack, 8 defense, so one better on the defense, but nothing particularly special. A 5 charge bonus, also heavy weapon type. They might look pretty similar to you so far, but crucially, they do have good morale. Now, that honestly seems to be pretty much the only difference between them. They are also more expensive on the old upkeep. But good morale, like I say, is very, very important in the game. Uh, you know, morale does make the difference. The longer your troops can hold out, the morale advantage that you have over your opposition will make a huge difference, even if it is just with one unit. Now, for me personally, would I spend an extra 900 denarii for good morale? Possibly. It kind of depends on what kind of fight you're, you're thinking you're fighting. If you're going to fight a long slugging match, then the morale is very, very important. If you're going to have the kind of fight where you're skirmishing a lot and then maybe a quick charge in the back, and actually morale isn't too much of a factor, then probably it's not worth the money. But these are pretty damn strong units. We've looked at the mercenaries available so far, and really there's not a lot of really offensive infantry that is available to you. You've got the more defensive units like the Samnite mercenaries and the mercenary hoplites, but actually there isn't a lot of infantry units that are really going to pack a punch and sort of just charge forward and be a little bit crazy. And I feel like the Bastani and the Thracian mercenaries are two examples of units that actually subvert that those sort of expectations of what mercenaries are, usually are. So I actually would quite recommend these, these two sort of guys if you're in the region. I think there are definitely better units that you could recruit, but you know what, if you need a sort of crazy unit that isn't just going to stand there and hold a spear for a while, then uh, yeah, this is more the option I would kind of go for in terms of mercenaries anyway. And that, I believe, are all the mercenaries available in the Mediterranean region. Now, I think this is some of the strongest selection of mercenaries you're going to find anywhere in the map. We've already discussed the barbarian sort of area mercenaries, and apart from the odd unit of uh, cavalry, actually, they're really not that strong. Not a huge amount of cavalry available here, actually. It is much more of a sort of uh, focus on the infantry and the spearmen, but definitely, and actually also the missile troops. The missile troops are really quite good, particularly those Cretan archers, of course. But yeah, I definitely like these guys. I think if you're going to do a campaign where you're going to be using mercenaries a lot, then, uh, you know, choosing to recruit them from this region is probably quite a good idea. Of course, this isn't all the mercenaries. I do have one more video to make, and that is going to be on the Middle Eastern and North African mercenaries that are available. An interesting bunch for sure, so make sure you stay on the channel to uh, check that out. That will be coming very, very soon. But thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you around.